Hey everyone, good morning. Um, I'm about to go through an hour approximately of yoga. My watch is broken and I can't really see the time on this, but I've done the routine enough times that it'll hit close to that. Um, I am, my mat is a little bit back so that the camera can view me from head to toe so that you can see the posture, which unfortunately means that the sound, what I'm saying is sometimes a little difficult to hear. Um, however, the most important thing in any yoga practice is that you are breathing, listening to your body, and assisting with your body to guide you down the path of movement and postures that feels good, that feels strong, and that doesn't leave you fatigued or wishing you hadn't in, <laughs> begun this in the first place. So I'm going to begin very slowly. Um, it might speed up a little bit towards the middle just as it tends to get a little more intense. Um, feel free to stop at any time. Don't hurt yourself. Invite flexibility. Invite strength. Invite posture into the body. Do not force any of these things. Um, consistency over time will yield better results than neglecting your body today and then forcing it to be to an objective tomorrow. Giving it that time to go down the path to reach a goal is where you're going to find a longer term, a healthier strength, posture, balance flexibility um, so that we're not hurting ourselves on a path in trying to better ourselves or improve ourselves or keep ourselves strong. So without talking too much in front of the camera, I'm just going to step back and begin. I hope you can hear me. I 
Last time, inhale, we got palms to heart, exhale, interlace the fingers as you draw the breath in, round the back as you move the breath out, sit tall, inhale, release the palms, exhale, palms go up, look up, inhale, palms drop, exhale, couple times. Last time, palms come up, look up, inhale. Dropping palms, exhale. Allow the palms to rest on the knees and the thighs. Find yourself sitting comfortable, strong. Energized by the breath, the shoulders and back are warm. Connecting to the core, uniting. Allowing the ribs to expand and collapse as the core engage. No belly breathing. Again, become familiar with the symmetry of the square that comes from the shoulders to the hips and the spine tall between. And encourage your body to maintain that awareness and that posture throughout the practice and to maintain the breath as well. Let's drop the palms to the front of the mat. Let's take the feet back to a little bit of more of an advanced version today. Find a plank pose. Straight line from shoulder to hip to ankle. Exhale, chaturanga. Keep the elbows close to the rib as you cover the entire body above the floor. Rest the pelvis on the floor. Release the toes. Ground the shoulders onto the back and retract the back up. The back is doing all the work here. The arms are simply there for balance. Straight spine. Engaged core. Deep breaths. Tend to want to hold their breaths in back bends, becoming anxietic. Encourage the breath to move. Lift the ten toes under. 
engage the pulse, raise the pelvis off the floor, inhale into a high plank, and exhale back into down. Allow the hips to rise, the hands to reach forward, the heels to push back. Fighting symmetry, maintain the square shoulders, hips, long spine, engage core, moving down. If it's comfortable, allow the crown of your head to hang. Inhale, let's take the right foot high. Exhale as that foot finds a place between the palms, ankle beneath the knee. Exhale, drop left heel to mat. Square the hips up, engage the left glute, and then square the shoulders above the hips. Strong in this posture, stretching the hip flexors, squeezing the hip extensors. The heart is forward and up, the crown lifted, energy surging through the fingertips. Everything pressing away from gravity. Feeling the breath in your core. Allow yourself to find monkey pose as you rock the hips back, drop palms to mat, and then curl the toes in line with the knee up towards that knee. So your foot is neither curving in nor out, but in line with the knee and hip. Encourage the shoulders to be square with the hips, the spine to be long, heart to be lifted. The more the toes come up, the more you'll feel that stretch in the calf. Again, inviting flexibility, not forcing it. We're not torquing our knee here. Letting this feel good. And doing this every day so that it can always feel good, even though the range of motion may increase. Rock the hips forward. Land the toes in line with the knee and ankle. Bring the palms up. Square the hips and shoulders. Inhale. Exhale, palms to mat. Straighten the back leg, take the toes to the right foot, point the two wall behind you, and single leg point. Exhale, chaturanga. Allow the pelvis to rest on the floor, release the toes, roll the back shoulders onto the back, inhale, and cobra. Again, the back is doing most of the work. I can drop down to here and release my bones. If you want to press a little higher, you may. Keep the core engaged, you can take the low back in this pose. Feel yourself balanced on the pelvis, maybe even the glutes are engaged, helping the back. Lift the ten toes under, lift the pelvis off the floor, heart the pelvis ankle level, inhale into high plank, and exhale back into down with facing dog. Notice if the right foot is looser this time after stretching it. Coming onto the right leg once more. Inhale, lift the right heel. Exhale, the heel to mat. Ankle beneath the knee. Exhale, drop the left knee to mat. Engage the knee. Square the hips. And take the shoulders above the hips. Same side. Deep breath, strong core. Pelvis supported, gently flex the pelvis. Exhale back into a knee. Roll the toes up in line with the ankle. Encouraging alignment within the joint. Inhale, rock the hips forward. Inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, palms to mat. Step forward, forward, forward. Find symmetry in the hips. Inhale, the spine long, square the shoulders. Through the navel, exhale, bow. So here, we're not encouraging the chest to come to the thighs, but we're encouraging the navel to come to the thighs. So by gently pressing the hips back, you draw the thighs towards the navel, keeping the spine long, the breath deep, or engaged. Allow yourself to look to the toes, bring awareness to the knees, and drop the knees in line with the toes. Hips come down, allow the torso to rest onto the thighs. If you can't get that far, that's okay, go as far as it's comfortable to you. Inhale, take the arms back. Knees above the toes so all that the legs do not move. Only the torso moves. Exhale the arms. Hold. Again, knees locked in line with the toes as if we were walking. Strong, stable knees. Core protecting the back. Breath deep and energizing. And 
Inhale, draw the palms together. Exhale as you stand in Tuchadasana. Allow the palms to drop. Inhale, open the heart, look up. Exhale, bow forward. Pressing the hips back. Inhale, long spine, reaching the crown away from the tailbone. Square hips and shoulders through the navel. Exhale. One last time, bending the knees in line with the toes. This time we're taking the right foot back. Left ankle above the left knee. Exhale, drop the right knee to mat. Engaging the right knee, square hips, take the shoulders above, long spine, engage forward, deep breath. Exhale as you rock the hips back. Ankle stays in line. Gentle stretch on the calf here. Inhale, rock the hips forward. Take the palms up. Exhale, palms to mat. Straighten the knee on the back leg. Take the toes of the left foot. Point them to the wall behind you. See the leg. Exhale, chaturanga. Allowing the pelvis to land on the floor. Inhale, cobra. Elbows close to the ribs. Core engaged, back engaged, deep breaths. Feel the heart press forward and up. Shoulders rounded on the backs. Flip the ten toes under and level the pelvis with the heart. Inhale, high plank. Exhale back, down, fix the back. Inhale, take the toes to the left foot up one more time. Exhale, that foot by the place between the hands. Ankle the knee to knee. Exhale, drop one knee to the mat, square the shoulders and hips. Inhale, take the chest up, take the heart up. Energy through the fingertips. Right glute engaged, but the hips are still square, so that right hip is not going forward to the left. The shoulders are staying square above both hips. Listen to your heart, listen to your breath. Exhale, rock back into my. Exhale, palms to match, and step forward. Square the hips, shoulders, inhale, long spine, find that symmetry through the navel. Exhale. So here you can be wherever your body needs to be or wants to be. You can allow the hips to bend to maybe isolate the stretch more up towards the hips straight in the legs to maybe hit the calf a little bit more, or you can even flex the quads to disengage the hamstrings and maybe go in there a little more. Either way, you feel it symmetrical on both sides, you feel it comfortable. I'm going to take my feet a little wider here, exhale, drop the knees in line with the toes, hips come low, torso rests on the thighs, lock the knees where they are above the knees. Now take the arms back, bone the torso. As you exhale, the arms back. Strong core protecting the back. Deep breaths. For those of you who are wanting to work on squat form, this is a great pose. Feel the shoulders stay on the back. They're not sagging forward. Right to the left. Inhale, draw the palms together. Exhale, stand into Tadasana. Drop the palms. Inhale, gentle back bend. Look up, palms come up. 
exhale bow forward. Pressing the hips behind the ankles. Behind the hips. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, bow nice and Allow the knees to bend so that you can take the right foot back. Let's get the left foot first set. Just so you can see what I'm doing. Exhale, drop the left heel to mat so that the front heel points back to the left heel. It may also point to your arch, whichever you prefer. Just do the same thing on both sides. The pinky edge of this foot is what's holding the weight, so my ankle is not collapsing the way up here. Keeping it there, and as if I'm drawing the heels together, I flex the pelvis, engage the legs. So inhale, warrior two. Squaring the shoulders above the hips, nice long spine here. I like going into warrior twos before warrior one, simply for the torso symmetry. Allowing the arms to feel level with the floor, the heart to feel lifted, the shoulders retracted onto the back, thighs engaged. Encouraging your stance to be as wide as is comfortable. If you're closer together, that's great. Always working towards goals. Inhale, let's go into a high peak. Straighten the front leg, bring the arms up overhead. Exhale through the pelvis, keep the spine tall. Warrior two. High peak, inhale. Tall spine through the pelvis, exhale. One more cycle here, inhale. Warrior two, exhale. Noticing that that knee is staying in line with the toe so it's not collapsing in or out. Going where I want to. One more time, high peak, inhale. Warrior two, exhale. Taking the left hand around, we're also gonna lift the left heel off the mat so we're coming into a high lunge. Inhale, open the ribs. Exhale, both limbs around. The hips are square forward, shoulders are square with the hips, the spine is still tall. Exhale, palms to mat. Take the toes of the right foot, point them to the wall behind you. Single legged plank, upward dog this time. Exhale, chaturanga. Keep the right leg engaged. Inhale, upward facing dog, flip the left foot. Shoulders and hips are square, spine long between. Core engaged, protecting the low back. If you can, find your midline. Allow the toes, the knuckles of the big toes to come together. The heels to roll together, the glutes to engage. The heart to lift. Flip the ten toes under. Exhale, chatter on it. Inhale, high plank. And exhale, back to down. Find your breath. Find your peace. Inhale, let's take your right foot up. Left foot up. Exhale, the left foot between the palms. Dropping the right heel to mat. Again, the front heel points to the back heel or the arch. Find the pelvis. Find that back foot stability. I'll be of that foot. Inhale, warrior two, slide tall. Inhale, high peak, raise the arms. Off the mat. 
eye lunge, square hips, shoulders, long spine, engage core, deep breaths. Inhale, open the heart, exhale, palms to match, you can toes to the left foot, point the two wall behind you, single legged plank, exhale, chaturanga, inhale, upward facing dog, placing the toes to the left foot down, lifting the right foot. Find your symmetry, your core, your breath, heart forward and lift as the shoulders retract onto the back, legs bind in the middle, zipping up the midline. Flip the ten toes under. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, back to down, facing down. This is a bit more advanced. I'll invite you that if you want from here, you may step or hop the palms, the feet between the palms. I'm going to try to go into a temporary handstand. <clears throat> Inhale, long legs, flat back. Exhale, bow forward. Knees in line with the toes, bend as you drop the hips. Long spine, find your posture here. Inhale, take the arms back, only the torso moves. As you exhale, the arms up. My legs are shaking, inviting strength into my body. Inhale as you draw the palms together. Exhale as you stand into Tadasana. Shoulders back, heart lifted. Exhale the palms down. Inhale, look up. Exhale, palms to heart center. Coming into a moment of balance. Find your pelvis level beneath the spine. Allow the weight to shift to the left, to the right leg. Inhale, let's take the left knee high. Feel the shoulders square above the hips, spine tall. Exhale through that front heel. And it does not matter how high or low your leg is, as long as your spine is tall and your heart is forward. Inhale, lift the left knee as you draw the palms together. Exhale to press the three legs. Good morning, Durango! Inhale, let's take the right knee high. Shoulders and hips are square, spine tall. Exhale through the heel. Notice where your foot is. Is your ankle in line with the knee and hip? Or is it curved in or out? Inhale, draw the knee high. Palms come together. Exhale, depress the legs. Gentle back bend, inhale. Look up, exhale, bow forward. Inhale, long spine, push the hips back. Allow the knees to bend in line with the toes and we drop the hips. Let's take the toes to the left foot back once more. Exhale, drop the back heel to mat. Find stability on the pinky edge. Find the right heel pointing to the back heel. Spine rises above the pelvis and we inhale into warrior two. Inhale, high peak. Keep that front knee in line with its toes. Exhale through the pelvis. Coming into warrior one, exhale as you drop the left arm. You're going to square the shoulders up with the 
running your mat in gentle rotation to the right. Inhale, let's take the arms forward. If you notice your right hand is more forward than your left, invite the right shoulder back to meet the left shoulder. Keep this feeling comfortable on the back leg. Inhale, take the arms high, chest forward. Gentle stretch from the right hand all the way down to the left foot. Core protects the spine. Breaths are deep. Inhale, draw the palms together, and exhale as you square the shoulders above the hips and lower your two. Shoulders on the back, we're not collapsing in here, we're keeping everything back and lifted. Coming into reverse warrior, inhale, high peak. Exhale, drop the left hand onto the left thigh. Reaching as long a line as you can from that front foot through the hand. And then exhaling through that front knee in line with the toes. Reverse warrior. Keeping this feeling good on all the joints. Keeping the core engaged. The breaths deep. Look up at the Inhale, high peak. Exhale, warrior two. Coming into triangle, inhale, high peak. And then take the hand to the right, the right hand above the right foot as far as you comfortably can. Try to encourage the entire your, your square to tilt so that your torso, so that your torso comes level with your mat. And then exhale into triangle. Opening from the hips and the chest to the left side of the room. You can choose to have your hand here, on your thigh, over here. Some people may want to use blocks. Wherever you are, your spine is long and straight, and this feels good to you. Not forcing pain, especially not in the hips or spine. If you want, you can look up to further around the spine and spin. Exhale, let's bend into that front knee. Find your pelvis, take the spine above it. Warrior two. Inhale, high peak. Exhale back into warrior two. Taking the left hand and the left heel high. High lunge. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, palms to mat. Take the toes of the right foot, point them to the wall behind you, see the leg is plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Again, zipping everything up the midline. The shoulders are back. The heart is forward, core engaged. Breath is deep. Arms are high. Put the tip toes under. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, back down. We're facing dog. You may skip those chaturangas if you need. And just rock back into downward facing dog a little early. And enjoy the posture. Find your pelvis and inhale.
Heart proud, navel strong. Inhale high. Then take the hand the right hand onto the right side. Exhale. Allow your feet to find a comfortable width. Maybe you want them touching, maybe you want them wider than shoulder width. Wherever you are. Feel the spine balanced above the pelvis. Inhale, let's take the left knee high as you shift the weight to the right leg. Shoulders stay square with the hips as you exhale the foot forward. Heart stays forward and up. Inhale, lift the foot. Exhale, crunch into this posture. And then inhale, warrior three as you press forward and back. Wherever is level for you is fine. Encouraging your torso to come level with the floor while maintaining a square between the hips and shoulders. Straight spine. You can choose to have this thing bent or straight. Inhale, open the heart. Exhale, crunch everything in. Inhale, press into height. Reach up. Inhale, draw the palms together. Exhale, depress the wings. Taking a moment to shift the weight between the two hips. Find balance, find symmetry. And then draw that weight more to the left as you lift the right heel high. Find your posture, exhale through that leg. In 
inhale, draw the knee high. Exhale, crunch in. Inhale, find length and warrior. Draw the palms together. Exhale to press the legs. Finding strong posture here in Tadasana. Notice your heart. Let your heart be proud, lifted. Forward. Inhale, take the palms up. Look up. Exhale as you press the hips back. Forward fold. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, nice deep pull. Allow the knees to drop in line with the hips. Let's first take the right foot back. The left foot back, I'm sorry, it's the right. I brought my left back. Either way, it's fine. We'll do the same thing on both sides. Again, finding that square hip with the front of your mat. Inhale, take the shoulders up. Back heel is off the mat here. Allow your inner archer to step forward. Find the target on the wall in front of you. Take your arms up. The left hand is going to grab the bow. The right hand is going to grab the bow string. Draw the right hand back. Find your target. Breathe. Exhale, release. The right arm back level with the left. Exhale as you drop the right arm. Inhale up. Grab the bowstring. Exhale, draw. Deep breath here. And exhale as you release. Drop the right hand. Take both arms up. Exhale, palms to mat. Step back and you down with facing dog. Allow the knees to bend so that they don't adjust above the mat. So you may pop or step forward. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, nice deep pull. Allow the knees to bend so that this time you may take the opposite leg back to my right. Let the back heel stays high, square pelvis. Shoulders come above, inhale. Finding the target on the wall in front of you, bra. Bring the hands forward. Right hand grabs the bow, the left hand grabs the string. Inhale, open the heart. Exhale, draw the string back. Nice deep breath, inhale. And exhale, release. Dropping the left hand as it comes up. Exhale. Inhale. Release. Exhale. Take your hands up. Exhale, palms to mat. And step back to down with facing on. Upward facing dog. Or cobra, whichever you prefer. Flip the ten toe 
comes under and press back and shoot down. Yeah, he does. Inhale, let's take the right heel high. Or I'm going to do the left. Inhale, let's take the left heel high. Exhale, let's draw that left heel into the left shoulder as we come into a plank. If this hurts your shoulder at any point, allow yourself to find a pose that you like. Inhale, three legged dog. Exhale, into plank as you draw that knee into the chest. See if you can touch your forehead. Yeah. Not available to you today. Inhale, three legged dog. Exhale, left knee to right elbow as you come into plank. And exhale down your dog. Allow the knees to bend so that you may hop or step. And rise slowly, uncurling like a ragdoll into Tadasana. Just getting ourselves off the shoulders for a moment. Find your weight balanced in the heels, in the hips, stable pelvis, tall spine, strong heart, engaged core, moving breath. Inhale, take the arms up, gentle back bend. Exhale, bow forward fold. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, nice deep. back four step into plank. Let's just exhale back, downward facing dog. Try not to work your shoulders too much today. Allow yourself to find symmetry, find your torso, find your limbs, the breath in your forehead. Inhale, let's take the right heel back. Exhale, plank as you bring that right knee into the right shoulder. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale as you draw the right knee into the chest. See if you can touch your board. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale as you come to plank right knee to left elbow. And inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, down. into a plank. Exhale, let's drop our entire body close to the mat. And here, let's find a place where your face is above the mat and not forward of the mat. Hopefully you're on your own mat and you're comfortable with just laying down. Draw the chin forward. Find your spine. Let's take the arms back and interlace the fingers above the glutes. Round the shoulders onto the back. And then as we did in Cobra, you're going to lift with your back. Engage the spine. Find your breath here. Keep your breath moving. Deep, hit deep. Pull. Somebody was going to grab your hands and pull them towards your heels. Also, see maybe lift the hands off the knees. Either way, it's fine, wherever it's comfortable. Let's leave the right cheek onto the mat. Relax the 
relaxing here. Noticing the energy within your body, how it's moving throughout your body. Find oxygen through the breath. Allow your chin to find the center line. Once again, rounding the shoulders onto the back. Let's bend the knees and draw the, heat, the ankles close to the glutes. Interlace the fingers around those ankles. You can go into the last back bend we just did if this is not comfortable for you. Again, with the shoulders, with the back, we lift the heart. And then from there, if you want to come a little higher, you can engage the legs. Balance on your pelvis symmetrically. Find symmetry in the pose. Keep your core engaged and your breath moving. Keep the thighs engaged if you like the stretch that it provides to the shoulders. Again, listen to your body. Find comfort within the pose for your body. Your body is not my body and we may have different places where it's when you're ready, allow the hands to release the ankles, placing the palms face up, and resting your left cheek on the mat this time. Deep moving breaths. When you're ready, draw the hands underneath the shoulders, flip the tip toes under, keeping the elbows not flared out but close to the ribs. Inhale as you come into a high plank, lifting the pelvis and torso off the floor so that you can exhale into downward facing dog. This is the last time we're going to see downward facing dog today. Enjoy the pose, thank the pose for what it provides to your body. Downward dog is one of the best postural corrective exercises or poses that there is. Bend the knees so we can accomplish them between the knots. Inhale, long spine, straight legs. Again, if you like, you can allow the knees to gently bend. Let's hold the arms up and allow the head to hang, drawing traction on the spine, not forcing a stretch in the back, but rather just relaxing it, but encourage it to be straight. I find bent knee allows my back to be straighter in this pose. Unwind like a rag doll. Knowing that you're into Dasana, when the shoulders round onto the back to open the heart forward and up. Square shoulders and hips, straight spine, tall spine, lifted breath. Coming into one last balance here. Uh, 
control. Allow your weight to shift onto the right leg, strong posture otherwise. Inhale, let's take the left knee high. Allow yourself to gently bend the right knee so that you can place the outer left ankle onto the thigh just above the knee and curling the toes of the left foot towards its own knee to protect the knee in this pose. Square shoulders and hips, always, always. Arms come forward so that the hips can drop back. If you feel your pelvis tilt, come out of it a little bit so that your pelvis can stay level with your spine. We're trying to open the left hip flexor piriformis allowing the sciatic pathway to be traversed. The right knee is above its own toes. It's neither collapsing in nor out. Inhale, stand tall. Take the unbind the left leg. The palms come together. Exhale, depress the limbs. Allow yourself to feel level. Shifting the weight onto the left leg so that you can take the right knee high. Inhale. Gentle bend in the left knee, right ankle to left thigh. The toes of the right foot curl to its own knee. Square shoulders and hips as you drop. Only going as far as your pelvis will allow without a hip tilt. Once the hips tilt, you've lost your posture. So here my legs can allow me to really sink down, but I can feel that hip crunching and then my spine bending to that side. So I only go to a lesser degree listening to my body, feeling my body, and inviting corrective posture into it. Inviting the breath to keep a flow. Inhale, stand tall, draw the right knee high. Exhale, the wings into Tadasana. Nice gentle back bend. Inhale, push the heart forward. Look up as the palms come together overhead. Exhale the palms to pelvis, releasing the hands. Let's take the toes to the outer edges of the mat here. Only go into this posture if it's comfortable. Otherwise, you, we're just going to find a seated position onto the mat. So. Inhale, keep the shoulders and hips square. Take the arms forward so that the hips can drop back. We're inviting the, hip, the glutes to the heels and always encouraging the shoulders to stay above the glutes. If you fold forward a little bit, that's okay. My feet like to externally rotate here to allow my hips to drop between. That may or may not be the case for you, but that's what feels good for me. It's what feels natural. You can choose to be passive in this pose, just finding a strong posture, or you can choose to Squeeze the knees together and push the forearms out so that everything is engaged. Whichever place is better for you. Nice little abduction exercise. For the legs. Allow the palms to come behind the back so you can find a seated position. Embracing the knees with the hands, allow yourself to sit tall, bringing Tracking the shoulders onto the back. Only go into this posture if you can maintain a strong spine and core. If you feel pain in the low back, please do not do this. Inhale, let's, let's find our torso strong and straight. Core engaged, protecting the low back as we rock our boat into the water. Okay, so the heart is still lifted, the core is protecting the spine. Notice your knees coming to the midline, toes, ankles, and heels, and encouraging them to stay on that midline as we move so we're not rocking our feet back and forth, but rather they're just staying right here in line with the spine. Inhale, let's draw the palms together into the heart. My bone is in me. Exhale, twist to the left, bringing the right elbow to the left knee. 
Inhale forward, lifting the heart. Exhale to the opposite side. Keeping the spine straight, keeping your back free of pain. Move with your breath. Each inhalation draws you forward. Each exhalation encourages rotation. Nice oblique workout here. Only the heart rotates. The spine stays straight. Once you've done a symmetrical number on both sides, allow yourself to come forward, embrace the knees, and rock back into the water. If you like to find your V sit in boat pose, feel free to go into that as well. I'm going to go a little easy on myself today. Encouraging your hips down towards the bottom of the mat so that when you lay down, your head is still on the mat. I have a pretty long torso, so I find that works for me. Uh, just finding a nice, relaxed position with the knees bent, heels drawn into the glutes. I really like my back bends in the morning, drawing energy into the body, drawing strong posture into the body. So, preparing for this last back bend. Let's find the hips, knees, and the ankles in line. I actually like to bring my heels a little wider than my hips. I find it more comfortable. There's nothing that says I should or shouldn't do it other than my body just likes that. So, fighting your posture, we're gonna press through the heels, engage the glutes as you lift into a bridge. The core protects the spine as you move upwards. Always, always keep that core engaged. Find your shoulders square with your hips, spine straight between. And notice that you're putting symmetrical power through both legs so that your right or left hip isn't rising above or pushing harder than the other. You're pushing maybe as hard as you can, maybe not as hard as you can with the weaker leg and glute, and inviting the stronger side to tone down to match the weaker side. So symmetry is board. Maybe allow the back of your neck to extend, drawing the crown of your head towards the top of your mat so that your chest can come closer to your chin. Maybe your bridge can raise a little bit higher. Inhale as you lift the heels off the mat, come onto the toes. Exhale, we're gonna unwind a very straight spine onto the mat so that the tailbone touches last. And the hips will land square with the shoulders. Allow the heels to depress back to the mat, finding your posture. And then press high into your glutes once more. Keep your core. Maybe coming a little higher this time. I always seem to find a little bit more neck extension in the second bridge than I do the first. Glutes engaged, midline aware. Heart coming to the chin as best as I can make it. Not forcing, but it's encouraging. Inhale, I'm lifting onto my toes and get the heels off the floor. Exhale, unwind the spine. Such a straight spine. Dropping heels to mat one last time, refinding that posture. This time, and again, only do this if you're comfortable with it, we're going to come into a wheel pose. So this is going to take a lot of arm strength. I want people's necks to be protected. So don't do this if you feel that it's not safe for you. We'll get this in time. All those chaturangas will increase your tricep strength. So inhale, we're going to come into the glute bridge once more. And then from here, if it's safe and comfortable to you, you can press through the palms so that the crown of your head is on your back. And then if you like, you can come from here and press higher. Either way, the core protects the spine, you keep your breath moving. 
Connect the power through both legs. Square in the toes. A tricep dip because I like them. Exhale as you gently drop the back of the head back to the mat, turning the shoulders to the mat. From here, we're in a nice hybrid. We're lifting the toes up so that we can unwind the spine down. And then return the heels to that. Allow the palms to come down by your side, maybe. Connecting with your breath. That's our last back bend of the day. Let's draw the knees into the chest. Interlace the fingers around the knees. And gently walk from left to right. So that you just loosen the spine. Thanking the strength that your core has generated. Once you find a nice square pose. Uh, let's drop the hands down beside the hips, press the heels high. A little bit of core work here. Notice where your right heel is and encourage it to stay in that place. Strengthen your core. Only lower your left heel as close as you can to the mat without hurting your low back. If this low back loses contact with the mat, you've gone too far. If the right foot moves from its place, you've gone too far. You're only going where your body allows. Exhale as you lift the left foot, and inhale as you drop the right. Same thing, the left heel stays where you want it. The low back maintains contact with the mat, the core stays engaged. You can still breathe. Exhale, lift the right heel, and draw the knees into the chest, gentle left. Not a lot of core work, but just a little bit, just enough to Notice where that's at. You can always do butterfly kicks or any sort of arrangement. Let's press the heels up. Drop the hands to mat. Exhale, we're going to crunch as we draw our forehead towards our knees, lifting the shoulders off the mat, looking at or between the thighs. If you like from here, you may touch your toes. If you can't touch your toes, that's great. And then allow yourself to rock back down and bite the knees into the chest. Gentle rock. Allow the left glute, the left heel to drop down in line with its glute. And take the outside of the right ankle across the left thigh. So we did this in the seated pose. The toes of the right foot curl up towards its own knee to protect the knee. Interlace the fingers under the fold of the knee. Keeping the hips square with the shoulders. Allow no hip tilting here. Draw the left knee into the chest. Opening piriformis on the right side. You may notice that the, one of your hips wants to rise or tilt off the mat. Maintain your awareness with the hip with your sits bone so that you don't bring asymmetry or incorrect posture into the body. Opening here for this on the right side so that the sciatic pathway can be traveled, communicated through. Allow the left glute, the left heel to drop to the left glute, release the fold of the knee. Unbind the right glute, drawing that right heel into the right glute. Um, yeah, I said that wrong, but whatever. Taking the outside of the left ankle to the right thigh. Bind your square pelvis, your square shoulders, straight spine. The left toes curl towards their own knee. Hands fold under the, hands bind under the fold of the knee. Keep everything square, draw it in. Un unbind the hands so that the right heel can drop to in line with its glute. Taking the left heel to its own glute, unbind the legs. 
This time let's extend the left heel out onto the mat. So with the left hand, grab the right knee. Take the right hand, 90 degrees. So take a look over that right hand. Engage the core so that you protect the back in this bend, in this rotation, as you draw the right hip so that it stacks above the left. Listen to your body. Don't go any further than what it likes. If your back naturally finds an adjustment, that's great. Don't release the core to find an adjustment. Keep the core engaged. Allow the hips to come level with the shoulders, drawing the left heel in, taking the left hand out, right leg out, right hand to left knee. Core engages before you revolve. Feel free to look over the opposite shoulder. So from here, if I wanted, and it would actually kind of feel good, I could release my core to allow my back to crack, but I feel that it's just better for my body to not do that. Even though it might feel good, my body wants me to protect my core. It wants me to engage the core. After a moment of keeping my core engaged, I feel the, my, my want for an adjustment to travel down my spine that actually goes into my hip and my hip loosens up a little bit. Revealing that it wasn't my back that was tight, it was simply my hip. Allowing my back to crack would not exert my body. Drawing the hips square, drawing both hips and heels into the glutes. Inviting the heels as close to the glutes as I can get them, and then allowing my knees to fall apart so that the palms of my feet are together. And I'm allowing gravity to do all the work, so I'm not forcing my knees down, but just letting the weight of my knees pull on my inner groin, my inner thigh. Interlacing the hands above my face and then placing the pillow underneath my head. Like an open star, just accepting and inviting everything in the world. Open to what can come, open to what already is. Strength has a hard time existing without flexibility. So I'm going to invite some flexibility into my core. As I draw the breath in, I'm going to inflate my belly, pressing my navel away from the spine. This feels good to me. And exhale, I'm going to allow my navel to float into the spine as I relax it, not contracting it into the spine. Inhale, expand, nice through the belly. Exhale, relax the core. One more breath, inviting nice flexibility. And exhale, release. Allowing my hands to come out from behind my head, knees to come together. I'm now I'm going to take my right leg out straight in line with its hip. And then the left. Coming into corpse pose, Savasana. Sarah. Okay. Allowing my palms to fall open. I'm going to walk my shoulders down towards my hips and into my spine a little bit. I just find that's more comfortable to rest on my shoulders. I do this only because it feels good. All my, my heart posture, I want to press my heart forward and up. So that just feels most comfortable to me. That's where you're trying to find the most comfortable place for your body. Do 
need to have some padding under the knees to release pressure on the low back you can. It's better to place something under the knees and allow the back to come flat than it is to actually place something under the back. I'm allowing myself to go into my body and just assess my body, just noticing how it feels, maybe noticing asymmetries or places that generally hurt but don't or places that might need to release tension. Each of our bodies communicates with us differently, so just, just take this moment and listen to your body. Focus on my breath. I'm currently breathing in both my ribs and my abdomen. All of this is relaxed. I feel my chest press up, I feel my belly inflate. Now I'm going to allow my awareness to travel outside my body. Listening to the sounds around me, I can hear the river, the birds, the traffic, the breeze. I can feel the sun warm on my skin. Allowing myself to exist in this wide place. myself to draw my awareness back into my body. Having given it that time to integrate what it just learned, to integrate what postures feel like, what strength, flexibility, balance, symmetry all feel like. Allowing my mind to shut down so that my body can think. Now drawing awareness to my core, my navel. Symbolic of my physical self. I'm appreciating the fact that I have this physical form in this physical world. That I get to exist in this moment. I'm drawing that awareness from the core, from my navel, and bringing that awareness into my heart listening to its rhythm as a safety song of my life. And 
even bringing that awareness to the outer spaces of my heart, my lungs, as my spirit enters and exits my body with the breath. Noticing how that breath affects the race of my heart, affects the rise and fall of my core. And maybe allowing myself to come up to my third eye, and noticing my mental state, noticing the thoughts that are traveling. Thoughts are calm, relaxed, clear. I'm neither intoxicated nor hyper nor depressed. Simply level, stable. Allowing all of these centers to connect the core, the heart, the breath, the mind. All of these pieces are part of my whole. I invite you to remain here as long as you like. When you're ready, feel free to draw the heels into the glutes so that you may roll to the left or right side. Press through the palms to come into a seated position. Ending the practice in a very similar place that we started. And maybe noticing the difference. I'm feeling level in both hips, my spine all between the shoulders floating above the hips, my heart is pressed forward and up, my crown is floating. I feel much lighter in this posture than I did at the beginning of the process, the beginning of the sequence. I'm inviting some last movements into my spine. Inhale, gentle back bend. Look up, draw the palms together. Exhale, palms to heart. Shoulders, elbows high from the shoulders. Bottom right hand. Exhale, blow the palms away from the heart. Inhale, rock forward, sit tall, palms up. Exhale, release your wings as they float level with the floor. Inhale, take the palms high, look up. Exhale, palms to heart, elbows high with the shoulders. One more cycle, interlace the fingers, blow the palms out, round the heart back, inhale, release the palms, exhale, look up, inhale, palms to heart, exhale. Now that my body, mind, spirit, breath are all in a balanced state, I'd like to draw my mind to one thing that I'm thankful for in my life. Something that is not me, but that I maybe that maybe would make me different if I had lost it or not found it. It's usually a family member or a friend that I draw my focus to here. Some people might be thankful with their jobs, thankful for this moment, thankful for their life. Whatever you're thankful for, allow your mind to concentrate and settle there. Allow yourself to focus on that emotional feeling 
and memorize how that feels so that you can invite that feeling, that emotional state back into your day at any point, even in a stressed state, because you remember. I'm going to go quiet and allow you this time to focus on what you are thinking. Thank you for taking this moment for yourself. Namaste.